Hi, welcome to Mechanics 1 lecture on kinematics. Before we start the lecture, I think it's important for us to understand the word kinematics. Kinematics basically consists of two words. First, kina. Kina in Greek refers to the word kineo, which means to move things in motion. Matics, on the other hand, refers to mathema, which essentially means knowledge or the study. Hence, when you put them together, kinematics simply refers to the study of motion. One may ask, what about the forces causing the motion? Do we consider that in kinematics? Well, the answer is no. Kinematics is purely the study of motion with no regards to the forces causing the motion. So now that you are clear on the definition of the word kinematics, let us explore together what do we mean by the study of motion. Before we start, for this chapter, let us limit ourselves to the following. First, we will only deal with uniformly accelerated motion that is, a body in constant acceleration. For example, as you see in the illustration, a ball falls freely downwards due to gravity. Second, we will be learning linear and angular motion, as these are the fundamental forms of motion that engineers employ in real-life applications. A good example is the crank and slider mechanism as illustrated in this example. As you can see, there is a crank and slider. This refers to the slider. It is transversing in the linear motion. This part is the crank that is rotating in a circular motion. So for the linear part, we call this as the linear motion and the, the angular, which is what the crank is rotating. Let's start off with linear motion. In the study of motion, we need to be able to fully describe the position as well as the motion profile of the body of interest. So basically, there are four key parameters that we can use to describe. 1, 2, 3, 4, which we're going to explore in this lecture. Let's take me, for example, at certain point of time, I'm here. After certain point of time, I'm there. So, ask yourself, what are the parameters or quantities that we can use to describe be it my location or my motion profile. Again, there are four. Do I hear someone saying time? Yes, at time t equals to zero seconds, I'm at my first position, you can call it A. At time t equals to, let's say, t seconds, I'm at this position, you call b. So great, time is the first parameter or quantity you can use to describe kinematics of a body. Let's write it down, time. One down, three to go. So if anybody asks, where am I at time t, how would you respond? How do you describe my location? What quantity would you use to define that? Do I hear someone mumbling displacement? Great! Displacement. We use s to represent displacement and it has a unit of meters. Displacement is able to describe my location 
from point A to B and the distance that I've traveled. Great. Let's write it down. The second parameter will be S, which is displacement. Excellent job so far. Do down, do to go. Again, in the study of motion, other than locating position along with time, we need to tell people the motion profile. Meaning, did I take a leisure walk from point A to B? Or was I in a hurried mood? Or did I ran during the initial part of the journey and then took my time to reach the destination? From the above scenarios, what other parameters can you think of that we can use to describe how I actually moved from point A to B? Did I hear velocity? Excellent! Yes, velocity will be able to describe how fast a body moves. It is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. And in the topic of kinematics, we use V as the symbol to represent velocity. And it has a unit of meter per second. Great job so far. So velocity will be the third quantity we can use to describe the kinematics profile of a body. Three down, last one to go. So what is the last quantity or parameter that we can use to complete the picture in describing the motion of a body? Do I hear someone saying acceleration? Great! Acceleration. It is the rate of change of velocity a, which has a unit of meter per second square. An acceleration in layman's term will describe how fast the body actually changes from a velocity to another. Let's pan it down. There you have it, the four key quantity or parameters that you can use to fully describe the kinematics of a moving body. Again, let us refresh the four key quantities to describe the kinematics of any body. They are time, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Now, other than knowing all these four parameters, there's another important aspect of kinematics that we must get ourselves acquainted to, and it is called the velocity time graph or VT graph in short. This particular graph contains all these four parameters that we have just explored. Let us take into context and see how these four parameters are embodied in a typical VT graph. Now, as the name implies, a VT graph has y-axis represent velocity, which is meter per second, and the x-axis represents the time in seconds. So now, let us stay into context and imagine ourselves taking the train from Dover MRT to Clementi MRT station. So as the train moves off from its stationary position, it will start to accelerate. At a certain point of the journey, it will maintain a constant velocity as it travels towards its destination. Just before Clementi Station, the train will slowly decelerate to a complete stop again. This is a typical kinematics 
velocity time graph profile of a uniformly accelerated body. In fact, this VT graph contains all the four key parameters that we have explored. Let's look at them one at a time. Again, the y-axis represents the velocity. The x-axis represents the time. The acceleration is represented by the gradient of a VT graph. When the train was accelerating, it has a positive acceleration. When the train was traveling along constant velocity, the acceleration was zero. And just before the train reaches the destination, it decelerates to a complete stop. So the gradient of a VT graph has the acceleration information. Last but not least, what about displacement S? Displacement S can be found in the VT graph whereby the area under the VT graph represents the displacement S. So there you have it. The four key parameters are all contained within a VT graph. At any point T, we can acquire all the kinematics profile of the body. We will be able to calculate the velocity, the acceleration, as well as the displacement at any point of time. VT graph is very useful in helping us to visualize as well the kinematics profile between multiple bodies in motion, which we will see in the subsequent examples in this lecture.